Hello and welcome back everybody to another edition of my Introduction 2 series tutorial videos. Today we're talking all about intersections, not to be confused with interchanges, although they can be interchanged. <laughs> Small joke, sorry. Um, but if you want to learn more about interchanges, please check out my other video here. For today we're going to be talking more about city intersections and common intersection designs and go a little bit into the different types of intersections and how they work. Intersections come in a very wide range of shapes and sizes and can be defined in a variety of ways. These definitions don't describe every aspect of an intersection but rather describe usually one single type of aspect and by combining definitions of an intersection, you can get the full picture of what that intersection is, does, and what it was optimized for, or what they think it was optimized for, at least when they designed it. The first way to define an intersection is by the number of road segments or arms or different roads that come into it. So, for example, here we have a few different examples of three-way intersections. They have three road segments leading in and or out of them, and they are all three-way intersections despite looking very different. We have a Y intersection or a fork in the road, a T intersection, and a T intersection, but it's a roundabout type. Moving on, we have a four-way intersection or a crossroad, and again, you know, just as two different examples, we have this type here and the roundabout and we'll get more into the different types later. And then following this very obvious numbered list, you have five, six, seven, and eight way intersections. For the purposes of real life, you usually won't see five, seven, or larger than seven segment intersections. However, you do see them on occasion in real life. You also usually don't see eight way intersections and anything bigger than four or five, you usually have some sort of other device to control traffic, although six-way intersections are fairly common. The second way to define an intersection is by the type of control that has been placed on that intersection. For, so for the purpose of this example, I'm using all four-way intersections that are of the same type, but the control is what matters here, not the size, style, or shape of the intersection. For this first intersection, you can clearly see that there are no lights. If we pull up our junction view, you can also see that there are no stop signs and no traffic light enabled. Using Traffic Manager, you can also place down yield signs on occasion, but as you can see, we have no yield signs on this intersection either. That means this is an example of an uncontrolled intersection. If you were to come up to this intersection with another car, you would have to duke it out in the middle to decide who is right and who gets to go first. Kidding, of course, but it would require you to coordinate together on your own without any aid from a traffic engineer or the city or the road to tell you who should go first. This second intersection is a controlled intersection, and this one would be called yield controlled. In this case, because we are using yield signs as opposed to stop signs or traffic lights. So you can see there is a priority road, and the other road has to give way whenever a car is on this road. They do not have to come to a complete stop, but this gives you an idea if you were to approach this intersection, and you were in a car, and you saw the yield sign, you would know that you were supposed to give way to the other traffic if there was any. This intersection is what's known as a stop-controlled intersection, because there are one or more stop signs on this intersection. In this case, it is a four-way stop. If we were to make it look more like this, that would mean that two directions of travel have to stop, but the other two can keep going as a priority direction of traffic. This is still a stop-controlled intersection because there are stop signs on one or more of the roads that is controlling this intersection. The last type of intersection is what's known as a signal-controlled intersection, which means that it has some sort of traffic signal usually electronic as in this case where it has lights, however it could be some other sort of signaling device such as a police officer or construction crews. Signal controlled intersections can usually give a driver a lot more information, like whether or not a left turning vehicle is allowed to turn left all the time, immediately, or must yield to other drivers. And same thing with right turning. If all of the traffic is going 
towards the left of our screen, the people in the right turning lane should be able to continue right without any problem. However, if they were to approach that in an uncontrolled or a stop-controlled or yield-controlled intersection, it's much more difficult for them to tell what other traffic is going to be doing, whereas with a signal-controlled intersection, you can usually tell exactly what traffic should be doing, not necessarily what they will be. The final way to define an intersection is by the lane design, by which I mean the design of the lanes inside the intersection itself. There are multiple ways to do this. Uh, but the most common is to define just based on kind of popular nomenclature. So for example, one type of lane design would be a traffic circle or a roundabout. In some countries, a roundabout is different from a traffic circle, and others they are not. For the purpose of this video, we'll keep it simple and say that all roundabouts and all traffic circles are the same. There are, of course, different types of roundabouts or traffic circles. There are ones with controlled intersections, signal-controlled intersections. There are full-size roundabouts, such as this one. Miniature roundabouts, which are essentially compressed versions of these without an island in the middle. The big advantage of a roundabout is that you get all traffic flowing in the same direction around the intersection, thus reducing the amount of points of contact in a potential accident. It also allows traffic to flow a little more smoothly, as long as that traffic is not arriving in bunches, in which case the roundabout can get overwhelmed. The second type of lane design definition is what's known as a box junction, which looks like a box, usually. I say usually because in the case of this six-way intersection, it doesn't really look like a box, but this would still technically meet the definition of a box junction, as well as a six-way intersection. The biggest thing with a box junction is that, generally speaking, there is a rule that prohibits vehicles from staying inside the box in the center of the intersection. All City Skylines cars, unless you have some sort of mod like Traffic Manager, follow the rules of box junctions at every type of intersection or junction at all. What this means is that in the case of this roundabout, where you have this sort of box junction here, the vehicles in City Skylines still act like they are not allowed to be inside this box at any time unless they are able to proceed cleanly through it. This will become important if you are trying to optimize for traffic and are noticing that cars are stopping in front of an intersection even though it appears they have room to move forward. In real life, a similar thing can happen if you have too many box junctions in a row, which is why they generally aren't looked upon as favorably. Box junctions and traffic junctions such as this are cheap and they are compact and if you add additional lanes to them, they can handle bulk traffic better than roundabouts, however they cannot handle continuous flowing traffic as well. The final definition in lane design is called unconventional designs or alternative intersections. There are a bunch of different types of these. I'm not going to show an example of all of them, but you might have heard of some of them. There are throughabouts, there are jug handle lefts, there are Michigan lefts, there are continuous flow intersections, hook turns, quadrants, seagull intersections, uh, super streets, Texas T's, Texas U turns, turnarounds, bow ties, right in, right out intersections, everything you can possibly imagine. This is an example of an alternative design called a Michigan left turn. This one's rather interesting, I think, and can be actually used in city skylines, whereas a lot of the other alternative intersections have a much more difficult time being implemented in city skylines. The basic idea behind this intersection is that nobody from this direction of travel can turn left into this road. In order to turn left, you first have to turn right and then perform a U-turn here, where, hopefully, there's an extra lane created for you in both directions of travel so as to not slow down those directions of travel, and then you proceed straight through the intersection. In theory, this works really well, and in practice, it has increased safety. However, as you can see, it takes a lot of extra room on the road, and especially in city skylines, you can't place these U-turns too close to the main intersection, otherwise you run into that junction problem that I talked about. This type of intersection is what's known as a super street, or a restricted crossing U-turn, RCUT, a J-turn, 
or a reduced conflict intersection. This intersection looks somewhat similar to the Michigan left turn and operates somewhat similar to it in that if you want to turn left from these roads going north and south on the screen, you first have to turn right and perform a U-turn maneuver. Where this one differs from the Michigan left turn, however, is that there is no ability for these roads to go straight across. In order to go straight or forward or up in this direction, you also must turn right and perform this U-turn. In order to turn left from these streets, the main cross street or the priority direction, you simply proceed off to the left and there is a light here and a light here so that they are only crossing the one direction of traffic at a time and it also allows all of these people to go right which also allows them to proceed straight through. There are many other aspects to design such as advanced stop lines, parallel flow, continuous flow, um, slip lanes, and other turnaround points that can be included in your intersection design. This roundabout here, which includes slip lanes, can be defined by all three types of definitions of an intersection. It is a four-way intersection, defining it by the number of road segments. It is yield controlled at the roundabout, defining it by the traffic control that it has. And it is a roundabout style intersection with slip lanes, which is a lane design or intersection lane design definition for this roundabout. Slip lanes and other advanced concepts such as slip lanes can help ease traffic by preventing as many people from actually entering the traffic junction or the intersection as possible while still allowing them to move freely in the direction that they want without slowing down. There are other things to take into consideration when designing an intersection, including things like turning lanes or turn bays. For example, you have a bunch of people turning left and going forward in this lane. The people who turn left have to wait for the people going forward and vice versa if there is any cross traffic. Adding a turn lane here or a turn bay could help alleviate some of that traffic that wants to go straight but cannot proceed because there's somebody waiting to turn left. When designing your intersections, it's important to take into consideration not just the amount of traffic that you want it to have, but also just how much space or money that you have. The bigger the intersection and the more road segments it contains and the larger roads it contains, the more maintenance and upkeep you have to put on that road. One very important aspect to keep in mind in city skylines, however, is to not put too many intersections too close together. This also affects real life. In city skylines, it is even more important, however, because generally speaking, cars will not enter the intersection or try to enter a roadway if any part of it is taken up and they cannot fit inside with whatever car is left. So for example, this little piece here can only have one small car at a time and you notice that these cars that are trying to proceed straight through cannot enter more than one at a time so they all stop at that light even when they have priority. The other thing to keep in mind is to make sure that your intersections are built to stand the level of traffic that they have going through them. This one, for example, is having a hard enough time as an uncontrolled intersection. The types of streets entering an intersection may define what type of control, if any, you want to use for that intersection. For example, here we have used a yield control for the side street that is entering the main arterial road. We could also place a stop sign and it wouldn't make much of a difference for that side road coming into the main arterial road. If we were, however, to put a traffic light, you'll notice that traffic will build up in both directions in a way that is not necessarily desirable to the city and to us. And it's also causing a lot of problems with left turns in the main directions of travel. What I have laid out here today is just a few examples and simple definitions of types of intersections. There are, of course, interchanges, which are a type of intersection, and many different advanced concepts for lane design or intersection design that I have not taken into account here. There is also, of course, a lot of study that could be done on traffic lights and types of controls, comparing yield signs, stop signs, roundabouts versus lighted intersections, and how to get them all to work together or separately to provide the best traffic flow for your city. 
However, I hope this gave you a very good basic introduction to what types of intersections there are and some of the terminology to look for in your further searches. Hey everybody, I hope you enjoyed that video. If you do, Alfredo here says you should subscribe or maybe check out this video that YouTube recommends. Well, go on. Why don't you do it?